Hi, this is a short video on 10 reasons why evolution is false. Reason number one, it is unbiblical. A literal or plain reading of Genesis does not allow for long ages, nor does it allow for evolution. And if you want to know why we should take Genesis literally, I've done another short video on that topic. As well as this, the Bible teaches us that God created man and woman directly and personally. The Bible teaches that birds were created on day five and dinosaurs were created on day six, contrary to the theory of evolution. And the Bible also teaches, more importantly, in Romans 5, 12 and in other places, that there was no such thing as death before sin. And so therefore, we couldn't have had billions and billions of years of death until the first human sin. And the second reason that evolution is false is that it is unscientific. And this might surprise you. I hope it does. The scientific method is a method of testing, observing, repeating and recording. And so we know gravity is true because we can throw something up and down and we can do it again, do it again. We test, repeat, observe, and then we can record uh, how far it falls and how quickly to get the speed of gravity. Evolution cannot be observed. Evolution cannot be repeated. It has been tested, tested on bacteria, on flies, but what we find after hundreds of generations of bacteria and flies is that bacteria remain bacteria, flies remain flies, finches remain finches, dogs remain dogs, and humans remain humans. Uh, evolution do claim to have support in a, in a form of record, in the fossil record, but we'll look at that a little bit later in this video. The third reason that evolution is false is the reason of thermodynamics. We could say the second law of thermodynamics in particular, and the idea of entropy. And this really states in layman's terms that things work from order to chaos or from order to disorder. If you make a hot cup of tea and leave it on the side, it will go cold, heat dissipates um, in, in the natural environment. Uh, if you leave things alone, uh, if you leave an ordered system alone, it will eventually break down into chaos and disorder. And so you see, for instance, if you were to buy a car and just leave it sat on the streets and you came back to it 50 years later without having driven it, it wouldn't work, the battery would be dead, it would be rusty because entropy happens. The same for a garden. Um, I'm sure that someone watching this is perhaps a keen gardener. I've done a little bit myself. And I know this for a fact, if you leave your garden for weeks and weeks and months and months, the garden does not get better, it gets worse. Things that are ordered and organized, left to themselves, le nature left to itself, becomes disorganized, disordered, and chaos. This means it's a downward spiral, whereas evolution requires an upward spiral. And so evolution is in conflict with the second law of thermodynamics and the idea of entropy. And fourthly, the idea of irreducible complexity. And so if you think of the human body and you think that we apparently went from the goo to you via the zoo, from a single celled organism to a double celled organism to a tadpole fish, et cetera, et cetera, frog. We have to wonder how some of these things evolved. So if you think of our blood, our blood vessels, our hearts and our lungs, which evolved first? If it was our blood, how did it stay in our bodies and how did it pump around? If we had blood and blood vessels, but no heart, Again, how did it move? If we had a heart that was pumping, but no blood to pump, what purpose does that serve? Rather, our circulatory system is a complete system that is dependent upon every part and dependent upon the lungs to get oxygen in and CO2. Uh, the same with eating. We have a mouth, we have a stomach, we have intestines, and we have waste disposal. Which of those evolved first? How can any of those have evolved independent of the others? They're a complete system that each relies on the other one to work. But even more complex than that is sexual reproduction. The idea is that single-celled organisms copied themselves asexually, but at some point in evolutionary history, evolution decided now you need uh, genitals, now you need male and female, and how on earth does two creatures separately to each other evolve the right working bits in order to be able to reproduce, not just in the same creature, but in two different creatures at the same time. How does that work? The fifth reason is missing links. Here's just a screenshot from Wikipedia. I don't like Wikipedia nor use it as a source, but I just find thought this was interesting because it's kind of misleading. Uh, granted on Piltdown Man, it does say eventually revealed to be a hoax, but it lists these things as if they're well-known missing links, as if they are part of the human, uh, 
evolutionary fossil record. Uh, and yet none of these things are actually human ancestors. Uh, Piltdown Man, Java Man, they are, are frauds. Um, Homo habilis and Lucy, which is uh, Australopithecus, they're not even considered by evolutionists to be human ancestors. But Wikipedia puts it in such a way that just by looking at that, you think, oh, these are all examples of human ancestors. Not so. They have yet to find evidence in the fossil record of any sort of pre-human, non-human, ape-like ancestor. It's just not there. The fossils they find, they're either human or they're ape. They're not one or the other. Uh, the sixth is countless frauds. This kind of comes on from that last point. Uh, here, uh, a list, uh, here's one fraud, Heckel's embryos. Uh, so they were drawn in 1874 by Ernst Haeckel. Uh, they were debunked at least by 1997 in Science Journal, perhaps even before then. Uh, but they were in my school textbooks, um, and I've put circa kind of the, the time that I was at school. So this is almost a decade on from the fact that they've been debunked, yet they're still being used in school textbooks to promote evolution. Why is that? It's because there's nothing better uh, to teach evolution with. Again, here we've got the evolution of the horse. This is a Britannica encyclopedia. This was last accessed on January the 3rd, 2022. And the first line I've underlined, it says, the evolutionary lineage uh, of the horse is among the best documented of all paleontology. And yet here on the next slide are two quotes predating 2022, one of them from 30 years ago, uh, which is Wadsworth. He says other examples, including the much repeated gradual evolution of the modern horse, have not held up under close examination. And this one from 1950, many examples commonly cited, such as the evolution of the horse family or the saber-toothed tigers, can readily be shown to have been unintentionally falsified and not to be really orthogenetic. And so basically the same, the horse evolution theory doesn't hold up, but Britannica says it's the best evidence. And there's a museum, the Horse Museum in Kentucky, which still teaches the evolution theory of the horse. Uh, and yet all of, of what they're teaching has been falsified or debunked, but it's still there because they have nothing better to replace it with. Uh, again, here's a list of some other of these countdown frauds, Piltdown Man and Java Man we've looked at um, briefly on Wikipedia, Nebraska Man, I can put some links to good resources uh, to look at these things. Uh, a guy named Jay Seagert does some really good work on these. Um, Aim Rutot's ear, ear lifts, basically faked um, primitive tools uh, of eight like ancestors. Campus facial angle theory, the idea that uh, faces got flatter, the, the less ape like humans were. Um, Confucianosaurus and Archaeoraptor um, in the kind of dinosaur fossil record. Yankon sheep and the march to progress, this idea, this picture, uh, kind of middle right of apes becoming more human like. Even evolutionists say that that idea is a bit of a myth and a fraud. Uh, as well as this, here's a quote from Stephen Jay Gould. He says, The evolutionary trees, uh, they adorn our textbooks and have data only at the tip and nodes of their branches. The rest is inference, however reasonable, not the evidence of fossils. So this whole evolutionary tree, according to a leading evolutionist, is not, um, is, uh, what does he say? It's not the evidence of fossils. The seventh reason is moral problems. So there's a problem from medicine in that should we treat diseases that are affecting people, hereditary diseases, because they might slow down human evolution. There's a problem around sexu sexuality because we're now having multiple genders, we're having homosexuality and things like that, and these things cannot reproduce. So the question must be asked, why would multiple genders and homosexuality evolve if evolution is true? I once asked this really evolutionist and he said, evolution must realize that we're overpopulated. And so I said, well, is evolution therefore making sure that the least fit among us are not able to reproduce? And uh, he was kind of like, ooh, walked into that one. Uh, we also have questions around theft, murder, genocide, and rape. Are these things okay in an evolutionary system if it's survival of the fittest? If it's, uh, I must uh, survive and pass my genes on to the next generation, uh, surely all of these things are okay. And also racism, I want to highlight racism a little bit more. Uh, here are two quotes, one from Darwin, one from Hitler. 
and I've highlighted some things in red. Darwin's title, this is his title of his book, On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. And most people don't realize that the full title includes the words, or the preservation of favored races. What does he mean by that? in the struggle for life. Uh, Hitler was influenced by Darwin, and uh, he wrote here, if nature does not wish that weaker individuals should mate with stronger, she wishes even less that a superior race should intermingle with an inferior one. Because in such a case, all her efforts through hundreds of years to establish an evolutionary higher stage of being may thus be rendered futile. So Hitler believed in the Aryan race, a superior race. He believed that blacks and Jews were at the lower spectrum and needed to be wiped out in order for humanity to be cleansed and to progress. As well as this, here's another quote from Darwin. At some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. Who are the civilized races? white Europeans, who are the savage races, Africans and South Americans and, and people like that. And so evolution, as proposed by Darwin, is inherently racist. Here is a picture of the human zoo. This is in North America. And we've got a savage race being watched by the civilized race to see how these uh, savages behaved. Uh, these were believed to be more ape-like. And the same thing was done to Aborigines um, all over Europe and North America. And here's another screenshot from a video I'll post a link to Darwin's impact on society. And here's a quote from biologist Edward East. Nature eliminates the unfit and preserves the fit. It is man who has caused all the trouble. He has put his whole soul into saving the unfit. So in other words, we should just let those who are weakest die. We shouldn't treat them medically. We should um, progress onto a stage of higher being, like Hitler said. The eighth reason, and I'm going to do these last three quickly, logic and reason, that is, if everything is random chance, if evolution is random and human evolution is random, then my brain is the result of just random chance. And therefore, logic and reason, can't. my brain can't be trusted if it's just the, the result of a random process. The ninth reason is origins. Evolution cannot explain origins. It may, may be able to explain to a small degree the survival of the fittest, but it cannot explain the arrival of the fittest. It cannot explain how life began in the first place. And then 10, uh, DNA. DNA is the most complex source of information on the planet. It is a language like no other. There are no computer systems that we have that even get close to what is in DNA, yet DNA is in every living thing. All languages are the product of a mind, and there is no known process for adding new information in uh, to a creature that passes on. Everything that I pass on to my kids is already existing information. And DNA uh, wasn't known in Darwin's day. And it really, it just blows evolution plain out of the water. So that's 10 reasons why evolution is false. I'm going to put some information in the description and other links and stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, God, God bless.